Hello friends, welcome to this video lecture on collinear Lagrange points in Sun Earth system. The two massive bodies exert an unbalanced gravitational force at a point, altering the orbit of whatever is at that point. At the Lagrange points, the gravitational force of two large bodies and the centrifugal force balance each other. This can make Lagrange points an excellent locations for satellite as orbit corrections and hence fuel requirement needed to maintain the desired orbit are kept at a minimum. There are five equilibrium points to be found in the vicinity of orbiting masses. They are called Lagrange points in the honor of French-Italian mathematician Joseph Lagrange who discovered these points while studying the restricted three-body problem. The term restricted refers to the condition that two of the masses are very much heavier than the third. Today, we know that full three-body problem is chaotic and so cannot be solved in a closed form. Therefore, Lagrange had good reasons to make some approximations. Moreover, there are many examples in our solar system that can be accurately described by the restricted three-body problem. I welcome you to today's lecture on estimation of L1, L2, L3, the three collinear Lagrange points where we embark on the exciting journey through the intricacies of our Sun Earth system with minimal basic knowledge so that even a school student can appreciate this approach. Lagrange points first discovered by the brilliant mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange in 18th century represent stable equilibrium points where the gravitational field is zero. Lagrange named these points L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 as liberation points. For any combination of two orbital bodies, there are five Lagrange points L1 to L5 all in the orbital plane of the two large bodies. There are five Lagrange points for Sun-Earth system and five different Lagrange points for Earth-Moon system. L1, L2, L3 are on the same line through the centers of two bodies while L4 and L5 each act as the vertex of equilateral triangle formed with the centers of two large bodies. The Aditya L1 mission has created a mass awareness of this vantage point, the Lagrange point L1, during its launching of the mission on September 2nd, 2023, while the James Webb telescope was launched to point L2 on December 25th, 2021 has tapped curiosity of everyone. You can check out my first video on finding L1 point through the link provided below and enjoy this L1, L2, L3 finding by a quick and simple approach. You have started watching this video and I am Dr. Shamkant Anwane, professor and head Department of Physics at Sri Shivaji Education Society, Amravati Science College, Nagpur, India. In our objective of finding L1, L2 and L3, let us first attempt L1 and L2. We have Sun-Earth system. Earth is revolving around the Sun in an orbit of radius say small r and the Moon is revolving around Earth. 
here we are going to start our discussion with couple of equations the newton's law of gravitation talks about the force of attraction between two objects small m and capital m separated by distance r this force is directly proportional to product of masses and is inversely proportional to square of the distance between them and the constant of proportionality is capital g which we refer as gravitational constant offered by newton according to newton's second law of motion we have rate of change of momentum equal to force and its modified version we can write f equal to mass into acceleration now this is sun earth earth is revolving around sun and moon is revolving around earth and the distance between center of sun and center of earth is r this is point l1 and this one is point l2 they are symmetrically located on either side of earth l1 is between sun and earth whereas l2 is outside the configuration they are symmetrically placed the distance between them is small e on either side the distance between point l1 and center of sun is r minus e it is obvious from the diagram and the distance between l2 and center of sun is r plus e now we shall estimate the force of attraction between the object say satellite situated at point l2 and this force depends on two terms it depends on gravitational force of attraction because of sun and then because of earth so here we have two terms to estimate the total resultant force of attraction so force on satellite is gms that is mass of sun into mass of satellite divided by the distance square plus g into mass of earth into mass of satellite divided by distance between earth and satellite this is equal to m satellite that is mass of satellite into acceleration so this can be further simplified for acceleration as like this in the orbital motion the acceleration is expressed by v square upon r where r is the radius of the orbit and v is the velocity involved so acceleration a is equal to v square upon r plus e now velocity we can write as distance upon time so distance that is described which is 2 pi r always so here the radius is r plus e so here we are talking for this radius and the circle of that radius so 2 pi r plus e divided by time that is period of motion whole square that will offer us velocity here we have used the basic formula distance upon time distance being complete circumference 2 pi r plus e and the time period is capital t whole square divided by 1 upon r plus e which we have carried further so acceleration is 4 pi square r plus e upon t square now we can compare two accelerations and we can write one equation as gms and this stuff equal to this acceleration and we can further simplify that here i want to pass a very important remark that when we are considering r plus e we are talking for this point l2 and our equation with plus sign this is plus sign being considered here this equation is for calculation of l2 similarly when we are considering r minus e we are talking about this point l1 and in that case our equation 
this minus sign and this minus sign consideration. This equation is for calculation of L1. Now we shall handle this pair of equation actually independent pair of equations for estimation of L1 and L2. In this equation we are talking for L2 when plus sign is involved and when minus sign is involved we are talking for L1. Now this equation is to be solved for E to locate L1 and L2 and here you can use the involved constants, gravitational constant, time period, considering leap year calculation, you can find time period in seconds and mass of sun, then mass of earth, mass of moon also we are going to consider so that we can have accurate effect involved. While doing calculation, I will tell you where I am going to consider that. Then R is the distance between center of sun and center of earth, which is 1.496 into 10 power minus 10 power plus 11, which is 149.6 million kilometers. And the distance between earth and moon is 3.84 into 10 power 8 meters. Now, this equation we are going to explore independently and we calculate that E is equal to about 1.5 million kilometers whereas the total distance between sun and earth is 150 approximately million kilometers. This is 1% of the total distance for locating points L1 and L2. Now I want to take you on maple worksheet where we are going to actually perform these calculations to find out E by solving the equation and I shall show it graphically also to you. Here we are into maple worksheet and I have written these commands already so that I should not waste time during the video time to type the commands and debug them. So I am going to run these commands one by one. So restart clears all accumulators. Equation 1 I am defining the force equation that we have already discussed in the pre previous slides and this you can see G into mass of sun divided by R plus L. So instead of E I have selected here letter L for Lagrange point because E is reserved for exponential function. And then equation 2 I am doing it with minus sign. So I have two separate equations, equation 1 and equation 2. Now equation 3 and 4 I am generating from respectively equation 1 and 2 wherein I am going to substitute uh, what you call G, accelerate, uh, sorry, gravitational constant, mass of sun as 1.9 into 10 power 30 kilograms, mass of earth is 5.9 into 10 power 24. Here I am adding 0 0.0123 times mass of earth as mass of moon. So mass of moon is small as compared to mass of earth, but we are adding this as correction in calculations and r is the distance between center of sun and center of earth and time period of the motion is 365.25 days each day of 24 hours each hour of 60 minutes and each minute of 60 seconds this whole stuff is being substituted in equation number one so by pressing enter I can get the requisite equation similarly in equation four we are having all constant substitutions in equation number two one is for L2, this, this equation is one is for L2 and this is for L1 because minus sign. So I am running this command also and then we can solve this equation for L. Equation 3 is being solved for L. The answer is 1.5 into 10 power 9. The other roots are imaginary which are, are not concerned 
in terms of physics depending on the size of equation power of l we are getting the number of roots and then we can solve the second equation which offers similar point 1.5 into 10 power 9 meters and what I am going to do here using MAPLE is I am considering left hand side of equation 3 and right hand side of equation 3 and then I am going to plot this right hand side and left hand side 3a and 3b the point of their intersection is actually the root of the equation here you can observe it is 1.5 into 10 power 9. Similarly for L1 calculation uh, we are having right hand side of the equation 4 left hand side of the equation 4 and then we are going to plot these two right and left sides and we can make out it is 1.5 into 10 power 9 in meters the point of intersection of the two curves which is actually the root of equations and if you like to see both the curves simultaneously you can have a look at these two points so this is one point and this is another point L1 and L2 I hope uh, you could gather uh, zest of calculation using MAPLE. Now let us focus our attention on finding the third collinear point which is known in the literature as Lagrange point L3. In two body system we need to speak in terms of center of mass or sometimes we call that as barycenter. The barycenter or center of mass for two body system is found by using the absolute position vectors to our external inertial frame. Now let us consider a frame of reference which is having mutually perpendicular axis x, y and z. Let us suppose that O is the origin of the system. We have a mass m1 and m2 the position vectors of this are represented by r1 bar and r2 bar now the center of mass we define as m1 into r1 plus m2 into r2 divided by m1 plus m2 here by this definition we obtain a new vector which is actually position vector of center of mass and this vector is appearing here. Now we shall shift our origin of the coordinate system from this point O to this new point center of mass or barycenter. The origin of this inertial frame of reference is arbitrary. We don't specify where the origin of the frame is, only that the frame exists and is inertial. Finding a truly inertial frame of reference can be tricky since picking a fixed location in the space is tricky. Even Newton deferred this question. So, now we are going to shift to the new origin of the coordinate system wherein we have new x axis, new y axis and new z axis and we are going to refer to all discussions with reference to this very new center of mass or barycenter. We first attach a non-inertial coordinate system to the barycenter of the system of masses m1 and m2 such that the x-axis of this coordinate system points towards mass m2. So this is origin of the new coordinate system and we have x-axis going this way. The distance from m1 to m2 we can write r12 
which is also the radius of the circular orbit. So I want to talk about R12. So it will be this distance R12. Now with this uh, concept, we are going to develop a new uh, figure wherein we are going to represent center of mass and all new coordinates. Now consider the first celestial object which is Sun. We are going to characterize M suffix S as mass of Sun. Then the another celestial object is Earth and its mass is being represented by M suffix E. We have center of mass as we have defined in the earlier slide and this center of mass is the origin of our new coordinate system which we are going to call as an inertial frame of reference. The position vector of sun is being represented by Rs and R suffix E represents position vector of earth. The distance between two celestial objects sun and earth is small r. Now this is the location of the Lagrange point L3. Here we are going to consider a satellite of some mass small m suffix sat that is mass of satellite. This is not going to play any role but we have to understand uh, applying these laws of Newton's law of gravitation which is gmm upon r square and then centripetal force f is equal to m omega square r. Now rs that is the position vector of sun can be represented by this number me upon ms plus me which I am going to call as pi 2 times r and this quantity I am going to call as pi 1. So these are the position vectors of Sun and Earth respectively and you can see obviously that pi 1 plus pi 2 is equal to unity. Similarly from the geometry you can identify the distance between two celestial objects R s is equal to sorry R is equal to R s plus R e. Now here we are going to consider the couple of forces. The first one is the gravitational force which is force of attraction between satellite and sun and force of attraction between satellite and earth. The plus sign is indicating that they are additive by their vector nature because they are appearing in the same direction. This is balanced by the centripetal force experienced by the satellite. Now we are going to get into the equation gmm upon r square so mass of sun into mass of earth sorry mass of satellite we are considering and then we have to account for the distance between sun and satellite. So I want to identify that distance uh, distance between this satellite and sun we are interested in talking about this distance which is actually L3 that green line minus rs. So L3 minus rs offers this distance. Then we have to consider similar force with reference to earth g into mass of earth into mass of satellite divided by the distance between uh, earth and satellite. So I am going to talk about this distance. This is actually r suffix uh, rather r suffix e plus l3. Our objective is to find l3. This is equal to m omega square r. So mass of satellite into omega square into l3 is the distance of satellite uh, that we are considering from center of mass. So this L3 you have to identify. I am picking up this green color. 
this L3 is to be identified as this very distance. Okay. Now I have just carried forward the last equation we have established in the previous slide wherein omega square is the quantity of interest that we want to establish and then we can find out L3 as per our definition we have established earlier. So the gravitational pull between ms that is sun and earth is balanced by the centripetal force of circular motion. This is the basic thing I have written again here. Now g into ms me upon r square so directly I have written the gravitational force of attraction between sun and earth and this is balanced by m omega square r s and here we can cancel out m s m s on either side and we are left with omega square equal to g m e upon r square into r s. So here what we have considered about center of mass uh, sun is also orbiting around in this way and earth is orbiting around the center of mass in this fashion. So here I am accounting for the angular velocity omega. Now we can substitute this value of omega square in this last equation and certain common things we can eliminate out that is g, g and g here then we can eliminate out mass of satellite, mass of satellite and mass of satellite. So our simplified version is ms upon distance square plus me upon another distance square that is equal to me l3 upon r square into rs. So we are almost done and we are going to explore the graphical method to locate l3. These are the values of mass of sun, mass of earth and mass of moon we are adding together as a correction factor and r we know it is 1.496 into 10 power 11 which we call 149.6 million kilometers and this we are accounting the distance we are not actually using it anywhere. Then rs we can write by substituting these values pi 2 we have 3.03 .03 into 10 power minus 6 almost very very small and I am going to talk about this this radius and I am going to compare it with this and uh, Re is ms upon ms plus me times r. So this pi 1 is 0 0.9999 that is almost 1 times r. So if you substitute all these values in the last equation and calculate you end up the location of L3 as 1.496 into 10 power 11. But this solving is not easy. I have done this calculation. I have uh, worked out this calculation in MAPL. I want to take you on the MAPL worksheet to calculate uh, actually this value of L3. Here I would like to pass a remark that L1 and L2 in the Sun Earth system are about 1.5 million kilometers towards Sun and away from Sun starting at the Earth respectively. L3 lies on the other side of the Sun and has long been predicted location of hidden planet since it could not be observed from Earth prior to the advent of satellite observations. Now of course we know that there is no planet at that location. Finally, we construct some plots of the situation. In the figure appearing on your screen, 
we are plotting the absolute motion of each of the two masses m1 and m2 as well as their barycenter. Notice that the barycenter moves in a straight line. The two masses spiral around the barycenter. One of the way to imagine this system is as the earth and moon waved as though you were sitting on the sun. The earth and moon would move through the space and they would appear to be orbiting around each other. If you observe them for short enough time, their motion would appear to be in straight line. This is another view of motion of two bodies subject to mutual gravitational attraction viewed from an inertial frame attached to the system of barycenter. In this reference frame, the orbits of M1 and appear M1 and M2 appear to be ellipses with barycenter at one of the foci. Another way to view this system is by setting the barycenter to the origin of the coordinate system as shown in the figure. Remember that since the barycenter is moving with constant velocity, it is not allowed to be used as the inertial frame. This is kind of like sitting above the barycenter of Earth-Moon system. You would see them orbit around the barycenter and the orbits would be ellipses. When the masses of these two objects are substantially different, then the situation will lead to a very different set of radius of this orbital motion. This figure fixes the coordinate system on the first mass and plots the motion of the barycenter and the second mass relative to the position of first mass. This is the kind of uh, like sitting on the earth and watching the moon go around. Notice that the barycenter of the system also orbits around the first mass in this reference frame. Here we are in the maple worksheet where I have already written those equations which we have already handled in the presentation. Now restart is a command that clears all accumulators. Equation 1 which we have derived I have rewritten here and I am just executing the command. So equation 2 I am substituting the position vectors R s and R e in terms of pi 1 and pi 2 in the first equation. Then I am substituting all numerical values that is mass of sun, mass of earth, correction of uh, the moon's mass which is not really important but I have done it and the radius that is the distance between sun earth system. And we are going to solve this equation for L3 and you can observe that the very first quantity appearing here 1.496 into 10 power 11 meters is the location of L3. The other parts are imaginary and they are not of our interest. So here you can identify this is second root of the equation, this one is third root of the equation, fourth and the last one is fifth. So we have five roots but the real root has physical significance as always we consider in physics. Now I want to uh, take a term of equation 3 left hand side as function 1 f1 and right hand side term as function 2 and then I want to plot uh, these two quantities f1 and f2 where L3 location we can identify and I have taken the range where we can identify L3. So here you can see the plot, nice clear plot wherein our solution which, which is 1.496 
into 10 power 11 so here you can identify that location 1.496 almost close to the line of 1.5 and then uh, I want to calculate pi 1 and pi 2 so pi is already reserved in maple so I am using capital pi 1 and rs value so pi 1 is 3.303 into 10 power minus 6 similarly uh, rs this position vector is this much meters then pi 2 and re we can also calculate and these numbers I am going to carry forward in the powerpoint presentation so here we have the same graph of f1 and f2 offering us a calculation of l3 point which is the intersection of two functions and by program also we have calculated l3 the value of l3 is 149.6 million kilometers pi1 and pi2 in terms of numerical values they are as appearing on your screen and pi1 plus pi2 is unity the distance between sun and earth we have 149.6 million kilometers now rs the distance of sun from the barycenter this is 454 kilometers whereas the radius of sun is this long so the center of mass of sun earth system is quite close to center of sun it is only deferred by 454 kilometers re is obviously almost the same distance that is, that is like r and the location of l3 is 149.6 which is little further from the orbit you can observe here here in this animation you can very well identify l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 points along with the mass m1 and m2 now here in the right corner you can observe pi 2 that is 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 almost 0 so here pi 2 we define as m2 upon m1 plus m2 and obviously pi 1 will be m1 upon m1 plus m2 and naturally pi 1 plus pi 2 will be unity so we are having a balanced diagram here and here I can slide this arrow which changes the value of pi 2 and as we go on changing the value of pi 2 you can observe separation between l1 l2 and entire figure is showing the effect where the barycenter is becoming different than the central planet that is sun of mass m suffix s we say and in the case of binary stars the masses two masses are comparable and when the order is reversed then you can see pi 2 becoming smaller uh, sorry larger and it is approaching the value unity so this is the reversed position uh, in which earth is taking another side wherein you can identify pi 2 ratio respectively this is complete functional plot of uh, the requisite equation wherein you can easily identify l1 l2 and l3 the curve is intersecting with your axis showing the real roots to conclude our discussion i would like to show you this table wherein you can find l1 l2 l3 for sun earth system semi major axis of sun earth system l1 l2 and l3 hope you like this video and uh, press the like button if you really like it thank you for your attention